Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia Part 6 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Toblastic. And the next parameter was serum. Now serum was a very very important parameter in classifying organisms. So let us first try to understand what is a serum. So let us see what is a serum. It is the cavity between body wall and digestive tract. So often the coelom is also known as body cavity. So what do we mean by cavity inside our body? Now let us try to understand this in simple terms. What do we have inside our body? There are different organs present inside the body. What else do we have? We have the blood vessels which are carrying blood. Other than that, there are some spaces between the body, between the different organs. Like they are not very compact that they are exactly fitting in with each other. So there are some spaces and there we have again a fluid like structure or the interstitial fluid which, are, which is known as lymph. So the lymph is present in the lymph vessels. But even other than the blood vessels and the lymph vessels and the organs, also, there are some empty space in between and those spaces are known as the cavity or that is known as coelom. So, it is basically between the body wall, that means the wall of our body, the surface of our body and the digestive tract. So the digestive tract, if you look at our digestive system, it is present inside our body, right? So, that tube, the food pipe and then the di entire digestive system. So, that is known as the digestive tract. So, digestive tract starts from the mouth, it ends at the anus. So any space between that tract and the body wall, that area is known as coelom. So if you look at this picture, it will give you an idea of what do you mean by cavity. In, in the body, we, we divide, divide cavity also into different types. We say this as cranial cavity, the space which you have in the brain, that is known as cranial cavity. The area in the thorax region is known as the thorax cavity this is the spinal cavity so somewhere inside you have the digestive tract so between the digestive tract and the body wall these are the different cavities so this is what we mean by cavity so coelom is also not nothing but a cavity between the body wall and the digestive tract so we can say that all the internal organs which are present inside our body they are nothing but they are all suspended in the coelom the coelom is a fluid filled space in a multicellular organism except the blood vessels and the lymph vessels because blood vessels and lymph vessels are also fluid filled space. So except that whatever else fluid filled space we have that is known as coelom. So what is the advantage of having coelom inside our body? It ensures a cushion like protection to all the internal organs because I mean, when you have something, I, uh, you would have seen that when you want to carry something in your suitcase, something which is dedi very delicate, maybe something which is made up of glass, which might break. So how do you put it inside your suitcase? If you put it just like that, with a lot of empty spaces around, what will happen? The chances of its breaking is more. Because when you actually travel, it will keep moving here and there inside the suitcase and it might break. But if you actually wrap it with a towel and then put it inside and put some cotton over it, so what happens with that? That cotton and that towel gives it a cushiony feeling. And because of that cushion-like protection, that glass material will not break even if it is moved here and there. So similarly, all the internal organs of our body, they are suspended in the coelom. And this coelom, which is nothing but a fluid-filled space, it gives a cushion-like protection to all these internal organs. So first of all, it ensures protection. And secondly, it also gives a lot of flexibility to the body. Now, depending upon the presence or absence of coelom, we can again classify animals into many different types. Now, coelom is something which, which is not mandatory to be present for an organism to be alive. It can be present, it can be absent as well. So, depending upon whether the coelom is present or the coelom is absent, we can divide animals into the following types. Coelomates, pseudocoelomates and acoelomates. So, the name itself defines them. When I say coelomates, that means the animals which have coelom. Coelom is present in such animals. Pseudocoelomates, pseudo, the word pseudo means false. That means true coelom is not present, but a false coelom-like something is present. 
So it is not the true silom which is actually present. And the last one is acelomates. That means there is no silom. So organisms with silom, organisms without silom, and organisms with false silom. So these are the three categories into which animals can be divided based upon the presence or absence of silom. So let us discuss them. Let's first talk about silomates. So in silomates, a true silom is present. They are also known as eucelomates. The word U is often used as a substitute for true. So eucelomates means organisms with true silom. So body cavity is lined by mesoderm. So if you see, if you take an example, let us suppose we take this earthworm as an example. So earthworm is an example of a silomate. It has a true silom. Now if this earthworm is being cut from somewhere here. Let us suppose if you cut this earthworm from here, what will happen? And then if you study the cross section of the earthworm, it will look somewhat like this. This would be the structure, the cross sectional view of this earthworm. And this cross sectional view will actually tell you where the coelom is present. So here if you see this outermost covering or this outermost layer, what is that? This outermost layer of cell is nothing but the skin or the ectoderm. We were just now talking about ectoderm, right? Ectoderm or skin, whatever you call it because the ectoderm anyways later forms the skin. After that, you have a red color layer. So inside ectoderm, you have the mesoderm. Right? Then, if you see here, you have a green center. What is this green center? This is nothing but the endoderm. Right? So the ectoderm, mesoderm and endoderm is there. And then you have these green colored structures here. What are these green colored structures? These are nothing but the internal organs. The various organs which are present inside the body of the earthworm. Now where are these internal organs suspended? They are suspended in the silo. So here if you see this black colored structure is nothing but the coelom and this coelom is surrounded by a gray colored layer and that layer is known as the peritoneum. So this gray colored layer is known as peritoneum. What is peritoneum? It is the lining on the coelom. So it actually acts as a lining on the coelom and this inside structure is known as the coelom. So here if you see this is known as coelom. So what do you see? These green colored internal organs are suspended in the coelom. Right? So this is how the internal structure of coelomates look like. So they will have a lot of empty fluid filled space into which the internal organs are suspended. So there are a lot of advantages of having this coelom because if this coelom is present, it will ensure protection for the internal organs. It will also give greater flexibility to the body. Now, why do we need this lining on the coelom? Why do we need this peritoneum or why do we need the lining? Now, the lining allows the organs to be attached to each other. So here, if you see, since this lining is there, this internal organ is attached to this organ due to the presence of this lining. Again, this is attached to this, this is attached to this. So it basically helps to attach the organs to each other so that they can be suspended in a particular order while still being able to move freely within the cavity. So they are all attached to each other. They are also freely floating on the coelom. So they can remain in a specific place because of this attachment. So the peritoneum actually helps in connecting the internal organs to each other. So this is how the structure of the coelomates look like. So examples would be annelids, mollusks, arthropods, echinoderms, hemichordates and chordates. So they are all examples of coelomates. 
So here, if you look at the structure, I, this is the structure in the same form in which we uh, studied the ectoderm and endoderm, right? So this is your ectoderm and this is your endoderm, right? But here, if you see between the mesoderm, this red colored structure, would have been the mesoderm right but here if you see between ectoderm and endoderm you have an empty space and this cavity is coelom so the presence of this cavity makes them acoelomates now here just now i defined coelom as the space between the body wall and the digestive tract so digestive tract is nothing but the gut so where is the body wall this is your body wall and where is the digestive tract? This is the digestive tract. So between the digestive tract and the body wall, where is the empty space? This is the empty space. So this is known as coelom. So here also this is your gut or digestive tract and this is your body wall. So in between them, this is the empty space and this is known as coelom. Clear? Okay, so the various types of animals which are coelomates or where we see the presence of coelom are these so let us look at the next one that is pseudocoelomates. So here the structure is shown from before only how a pseudocoelomate looks like. So here a false coelom is present. So even though coelom is not present, there is something a coelom like structure is present. So here mesoderm is present as scattered pouches in between the ectoderm and endoderm. So here if you see this is the ectoderm. And this is the endoderm. So between ectoderm and endoderm, if you see, in small patches, you see the mesoderms are present. So they are present in small patches. They are not present as a continuous layer. So these scattered pou pouches are present and in between them, there is some empty space. So this empty space is known as pseudocilum. So it is basically not a complete continuous empty space, but some empty spaces in between those scattered pouches. So these empty spaces are known as, so these empty spaces within the mesoderm, they are known as the pseudocelom. So here the pseudom is partly lined, like, like in case of coelomates, the coelom was completely lined by peritoneum. But here the, that complete lining is absent, only a partial lining is present. Now here, although the organs are hold, held in place loosely, they are not as well organized as in coelomates. As I said you before also, due to the presence of that complete lining called peritoneum in coelomates, the internal organs were hold in place because that lining was actually holding the internal organs in place. Now in this case that complete lining is absent. However, a partial lining is present. Therefore the organs are present but they are not very well organized. They are somehow held loosely at their positions. So examples of animals which are pseudocelomes are nematodes where you have scarus and area, they are all examples of pseudocelomates where you do not have a true coelom, but you have a coelom like structure. So here this is the mesoderm, right? And the enclosed area is the coelom, so this is the coelom. And the last one is acelomates. So here body cavity is absent or we can say in simple words that coelom is absent. There is no coelom at all. So how will it look like? So in this case, this will be your ectoderm. This will be your endoderm. So there will be no open space between ectoderm and endoderm. And this is your gut and this is your body wall. So here if you see between the gut wall and the body wall, there is no open space at all. So you have ectoderm, then continuously immediately you have mesoderm, then immediately you have endoderm. So no open space at all. So no coelom. So body cavity is absent. So examples of acelomates would be platyhelminths, cilentrates and porifers. So these are some of the examples of acelomates. So here we can see the mesodermal tissue which is present between the uh, gut and the body wall holds their organs in place. So how are the organs hold in place? It is by this mesoderm. So the mesoderm will hold the organs in place. 
Now, did you observe one thing? While we talk about, while we spoke about uh, um, silomates, pseudosilomates, and acilomates, but if you look at the examples which I gave, acilomates are those which are comparatively simpler organisms like the polyphers, cylindrates, platyhelminths. They are relatively simpler organisms. Now, as we go down, I mean, I talk, I spoke about the 10 different phyla under kingdom Alimalia, right? It started with Porifera. So, Porifera, then Cylentrates, then Platyhelminths, then Nematodes. And then gradually, you will come up with the Echinoderms, and then Hemichordates and Chordates. So, as you go down the list, the complexity of the organisms will increase. So, acylomates are those which are relatively simpler. Then the next one were pseudosilomates. So the nematodes were pseudosilomates. And then the more complex ones were all silomates. So the presence of silome actually makes the structure of that animal little more complicated. Right? So the more complex animals are silomates. So this is how the classification was done based upon the presence or absence of a true silome. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.